How good is Australia? How good is Western Australia? I have never believed in miracles, but I have always believed in the wrath of God. I would like to make a special thanks to Blinky Bill for taking one for the team. This is not the sweetest victory of all. However, it is still a victory nonetheless, so I'll take it. And all it took was flood, fires and famine. The three poxes and we got a slim majority out of it. Worth it. Also, maybe a th fourth. Orphans coming in. Monkey AIDS. Get ready for that. What a hilarious way to die. Now, let's go through what happened. You know, I don't really need to because I'll tell you who actually got it bang on. Sky News. Obviously, the rest of the cuck press. We'll get into them into a second. But big props to Paul Murray and the gang, especially for starting the resistance, quote, end quote. <laughs> That's what he's calling it now. It's amazing. But they called it which was that this election, because the rest of the press were all saying that, uh, obviously, that there's a lot about climate change and being nice to women and corruption. Yeah, in your seats that you live in. How solipsistic can you possibly be? It is so... That's what I figured out is so annoying about all of the press versus why Sky News is funny. Sky News is funny because it's just bizarro world parallel universe of what actually is the case. Yeah, they understand what the electorate is thinking and feeling and how to play to that. Whereas everybody else is just so removed in this Marie Antoinette bubble of endless taxpayer money just raining down on them endlessly as they sit there being like, mm, let them have JobKeeper. <laughs> right? Like, they, they are in the most obnoxious, sanctimonious bubble. It is so evident in their coverage, which was... Uh, so the entire country voted how Wentworth voted. You're going to talk about the fact that Labor won a majority at all? Oh yeah, that'll be a side point to the fact that four Liberal seats changed to deals. That was the big story. Everywhere, everywhere. Anthony Albanese, this entree to the big story, which is that four Liberal seats have crossed over, creating an actual opposition in the country. It was infuriating! But then again, when is in the press? Sorry, that's my entire life is looking at the television and just yelling at it. And now you're getting it. <laughs> and I think that you know that because you're obviously a subscriber. But, but amazing. Can we all just say, WA, the common sense state, thank you so much for existing in more ways than one. More strip clubs per capita than any other state, I assume. Uh, your everyone uh, there is about four foot ten high. Every man. I don't know why. That's also a plus in my books. <laughs> the fact that there's just FM radio playing wherever you go. Nobody's figured out Spotify there yet. Incredible. And on top of everything else, on top of everyone there being a legend, just bizarro world Sydney. No one there is a kind of has the same atmosphere of it, except it kind of just ended in 1995 with a billboard going into Balmain that says Channel 9 on it, says, uh, you know, the number one news for source, source for news, and then now it's like more Australians trust Channel 9 than Channel 7. That's all that they can say anymore. It's just frozen at that time and good, never change. Because they actually see politics how it should be seen, which was God Emperor McGowan got you through COVID better than anywhere else, any other precinct in the country. Best economic results as a result. I know there's going to be all these people saying, oh, mining boom. No, you had a mining boom and you were in a deficit as a result of the mining boom because of Colin Barnett, Mr. Shark Man. And then McGowan comes in when there is no mining boom and you're in a surplus. It's just good common sense governing. That's what got Labor over the line, was just the fact that WA realised, oh, okay, Labor is what the Liberal Party advertises itself to be. Just those bean counters that actually know how government functions, have spent their life in public service, understand the roles, functions, how to implement policy, how to track it, and get it under budget. Thank you very much. They understand all of those things. And I think that WA clicked onto that and realised, yeah, okay, I want more of that. 
So that was a great little preview, a little saving grace. While everybody else is just saying that this is the end of Labour majority governments, that made me optimistic to realise that if people actually see what a Labour government is like, except for Queensland, they went the other way. But, you know, that's what living um, in a sauna does to your brain. Just makes you insane. But, loony greens. But they, they you know... Everybody else seems to understand that once the Labor government is in, they start to see, oh, okay, actually, yes, they just uh, build things other than f***ing overpriced light rails. Yeah? And so then they just move towards them. So I'm really, really happy about that. What we can look forward to in a Labor government, and I honestly do hope that it is very John Howardy, that it's just very steady as she goes for Anthony Albanese's sake, because that is what will get you over the line in the next election. I honestly sincerely hope that they just start rebuilding the shattered institutions of this country that are the gears that keep it moving, that have come to a standstill. It was just so obvious in the floods and the bushfires. When everybody, they were just like, oh, this is about climate change because I saw smoke on my Harborview mansion. Shut up. Shut up! That, that was... If people were voting on climate change, it was mostly because they understand um, maybe when there are major floods, there should be more of a response than my neighbour coming over to me in a dinghy being like, you right, love? You need a lift? Yeah, OK, get in. <laughs> and that happens when you actually have a strong government foundation. I honestly hope that that is the primary aim of the government to just make sure that there actually is a government instead of just the uh, with Scott Boris would like with everything else. Just, you know, a house of horrors. Ooh, come inside. It's so scary. And then you go in there and then it's just one witch with the lights that go and that's the horror ride. Anyway, the analogy is that uh, if uh, Anthony Albanese's government is going to be a better horror ride, but that's clearly the best analogy that I could come up with when I'm trying to say that they're positive. <laughs> Yes, so, the recap is, that should happen when they do implement this, because this was amazing, all these teals coming on saying, I'm putting the Labour government on notice about climate change, and a federal IK, what, so the two things that they're bringing, yes! Okay, <laughs> but, obviously when the federal IK comes in, that will probably decimate Liberal seniority even more than it already has been absolutely wipe it away. So it is like the last WA guy who was just some, I don't know, what was he? <laughs> Young liberals just rocked up and was like, oh, I think uh, solar panels are pretty cool actually. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> He's hoping that happens. Probably will. Probably will. Once they implement that, let's be honest, there will probably be an even bigger purge of the Liberal Party. I mean, the fact that they're even thinking about running Susan Lay as the opposition leader. Have you ever heard her talk? She's worse than Josh Frydenberg. Because at least Josh Frydenberg sounded like a low decibel, monotone air conditioner rumbling. That's a little bit better than Susan Lay, who has that awful crowy voice with no substance behind it, just no gravitas. That'd be great. I would love to see her as opposition leader, but she'd probably just be in there as like a stalking horse until they can move into somebody else. But that's really what you should be expecting from the Labor government this election, is really just the reinstitution of how a government is supposed to function. Hopefully that will get them over the line in the next election. Obviously we're thinking too far ahead into the future there, but it was incredible to see that the press's response to this, apart from Sky News, was really, what Labour government? Just ignoring them entirely, as always, is what they're always used to. Just these idiot chats that they have at Revisi's, <laughs> you know, in between their margaritas and their cocktails, talking about how it was a split, it's an irrevocable split within the Labour Party, Liberal Party, because they can't deliver on the things that I personally want them to deliver on. Other than that, they're a perfect party, as evidenced in the Teal's policies. Shocking. Shocking coverage. People that are getting paid $300,000 a year, who are so off the pulse from the average Australian. It's honestly like they've never talked to the guy that runs the corner store. Not even that. Just their assistance must go there. I don't know what's going on there. There is just such a... The fact that they sit there, I hate it so much how they're just like, maybe the polys will listen to us. And by us, they mean themselves, them in the press class. That's all they're talking about. Just 
do the two little pet issues that I want. That's it. Not what the rest of the country wants. They don't listen to the rest of the country. Always the politicians don't listen. Politicians obsessively listen to what is in the country's side, guys. I know this because every time you ever talk to a pollster, all they're talking about is what the country's thinking about. They don't. They don't think about that, ever. It's so evident in their coverage. Truly horrendous, but it's better than, I suppose, an immediate attack job on the Labor Party. I think they're just celebrating the fact that they're like, hey, we've got the soul of the Liberal Party carved out. That's it. I think that's what they're really happy about in this election. Shouldn't be, though, because Dutton, if he gets hold of it, will start doing what should have happened, actually, to the Liberal Party if they wanted to continue winning, which was exactly what Sky News was saying. Stop having this schizophrenic where Malcolm Turnbull and Tony Abbott. Just be Tony Abbott, go straight into the suburbs and just start yelling, China, China, China. That's how you get it. Um, so, because they're never getting those teal seats back, I think, anyway. That's my personal opinion. They're, just, they're two of that class that they can no longer afford to appeal to anymore, of the people that used to control the Liberal Party when they controlled all of the media narrative. But now that there is even a competing fraction within the Liberal Party from Sky News and the ABC and they're not all on the same page, I think that they're going to have to say goodbye to those seats. They're just going to have to move into the suburbs. Um, and then they've got obviously the nationals to cover their back. But all in all, just have to say, Tasmania, can't expect anything less from you, you inbred hicks. Thanks for dropping the ball. Queensland, just no better. WA, you've really proved that you're God's sake. You have earned that 70 cents in the dollar GST increase that still isn't anywhere near what you deserve, clearly. Raise you the other 30 cents just for that. Beautiful, beautiful state, beautiful people. Honestly, next time I'm there, I'm going to kiss the dirtiest part of the red light district in Perth so I get herpes there. So I've always got something to remember you by. Love you guys a bit. Thank you so much for carrying the rest of the country. Also, make sure that you sign up to our Patreon. Just give the people that have tirelessly poured their lives into this channel, thanklessly, a raise. I think they deserve it. Sign up to our Patreon. Please do that. And you also get bonus footage as well, so why not? It's just, you know, you get more insider baseball stuff like this. And then the next thing is, you know, I've got a bunch of shows coming out. That's the other thing as well. <laughs> Sorry, I just had to look at my notes really quickly. Yes, there's a bunch of shows now available. Bradley Geordie's Tale as Old as Rome. Come one, come all. And if you're extremely hammered, don't come. Just f***ing stay out. I'm sick of it. I'm sick to death of it. 99% of you, great. There's always just one slurring idiot in the front room. Talk to my friend the entire time. Oh, that, that, that picture looked like me. There's only so many times that I can point out you're a moron and it be amusing to the rest of the crowd. Then you just get annoying. Just don't come that intoxicated. What is going on in your personal life that you need to do that? Anyway, it's probably a good sample size that in an audience of 400, there's only one of those. There'd probably be in a lot of other comedians. There would just be one person there being like, I just came to see him and keep him alone. Shut up. You're ruining it for everyone else. <laughs> anyway, yes, make sure that you sign up. Sorry, it, it, it's a good show as well. And uh, yes, uh, great news. Go team. Congratulations to everybody that convinced people to vote for the Labour Party because obviously looking at their primaries, and they needed it. Thank you. Please share and comment below. Command.